The final step to complete our particle simulator is to develop a method to track particle motions forward in time. That's how our computer program will animate them, one frame at a time. We said earlier that if you know the equation of motion of each particle, then you can compute the velocities and positions from it. But how exactly? To answer that question, let's go back to the idea of velocity as the slope of the position versus time curve. Pick two values of time, t1 and t2, close together, and let p1 be the position at time t1, and let p2 be the position at time t2. The slope of the line L, shown here, is a good approximation of the velocity v1 at time t1. The closer that t2 gets to t1, the better the approximation. As an equation, the slope of L, that is the velocity v1, is given by the change in position divided by the change in time. If we know the position and velocity at time t1, then we can compute the position at time t2 by rearranging this equation to solve for p2. Great, so knowing the particle's position and velocity at time t1, we can compute the position at time t2 using this formula. But how do we get the velocity at time t2? Well, if we know the equation of motion, then we can compute the acceleration at time t2. For instance, if the particle is just being acted on by gravity, then the acceleration is constant and is given by the gravitational constant g. We also know that the acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time curve, meaning gravity equals the change in velocity divided by the change in time. And we can solve this for v2. Now that we know p2 and v2, we can repeat this process to compute p3 and v3, and so on for as long as we like. Let's do an example. Suppose that at the start of the simulation, we set our time parameter t to 0. Our particle is at point p1 with velocity v1, and the gravity vector g points down. To figure out where the particle will be at time t equals 1 half, we use the equation p2 is equal to v1 times the quantity t2 minus t1 plus p1, where t1 is equal to 0 and t2 is equal to 1 half. So p2 is equal to 1 half v1 plus p1, meaning that p2 is halfway between v1's tail and head. And to figure out v2, we use v2 is equal to g times the quantity t2 minus t1 plus v1. g here is the gravitational vector, which points downward, and on Earth has a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, t2 minus t1 is 1 half, so v2 is equal to 1 half g plus v1. Great. Now we can compute the position and velocity at t equals 1 using the same formulas. Although this is rather tedious to do by hand, it is relatively easy to write a computer program to do these calculations for us, like this. Congratulations! We now have all the parts we need to create a ping pong ball simulator. In the final exercise, you can test your understanding of these concepts before moving on to create your own amazing particle simulations.